Today on Exploring Scotland's History, we're going to have a look at the Hidden Hebrides. These are sites that we have visited that we might not necessarily have just as much information for a standalone video, but these sites do deserve recognition. Some of them were the most stunning places that we have to come across. Enjoy. some dilapidated old building uh, called Dell Mill. Uh, it's pretty much fallen apart, but it's got a bit of history behind it, has it? Well, in the 1800s it was a uh, whiskey still. It doesn't say whether it was an illicit one or not. Um, but this is an all iron water wheel and it would have been used to mill um, the corn and stuff. Cool. Hard, um, it's hard threshing machines apparently inside them. Joey's found something. Don't know what, but. Yeah, engineering, you like it, it's fun. Oh, plug thing. Engineering thing. Oh, that's a plug. It's got cogs, so it's an engineering thing. <laughs> We're at another church. This one is St. Columbus Chapel and it is in the I Peninsula, just outside Stornoway. Uh, this is built on a Neolithic site, it's about 6,000 years old. Not a church, but the site. St. Catan built the church. Oh, St. Catan? Aye, he was some Saint guy. Mates. Yeah, he was one of St. Columbus mates, which is. Yeah, why? I don't know. Currently, quite a lot of work going on discovering and refinding a lot of these graves. But they do reckon that this was maybe one of the bishop's headstones that brought this into the main chapel, and they believe this, which obviously you can't see very well on camera, there is a sword on this headstone, and they believe this was maybe a Knights Templar. Right, we've now entered a part of the chapel that is completely covered over. Um, we have an old McLeod headstone and a modern, but very pretty Celtic cross in the corner. This one is one of the Mackenzie headstones. It's obviously the clan leaders, that's very, very detailed and really quite amazing. Again, the hourglass, the skull and crossbones. Gorgeous. Also here is a beautifully engraved headstone 
from the 16th century. And there's Gallic script around it, um, which basically says, here lies Margaret, daughter of Roderick MacLeod of Lewis, widow of the Lachlan MacKinnon. She died in 1503. So this is really quite an old and quite an impressive headstone. Also have a rather impressive knight. It's actually so impressive, it's like two inches of relief, three inches of relief on the head. Doesn't appear to be any information on it. Still quite impressive. Billy's not a fan of heights, and we're like, you know, like 80 metres up on a cliff. Uh, not hugely impressed with Trump and Lighthouse. The White House itself's okay, but the accommodation's now being used as kennels and a cattery, and it's well. Well, it's a shit tip. It's falling apart. Like, I don't know, looks like gypsies have moved in. It's disgusting. Yeah. You know, the walls collapsed at the front, the outbuilding walls are collapsing, there's water tanks and broken old vans lying about. I don't think... For what's supposed to be a historic site. It's a bit yeah, I, I don't think Queen Elizabeth and her Duke Princess Anne um, as a child would really want to come back here now. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the Queen and the Duke of Cornwall and Princess Anne opened this place and well, we're up here visiting the place in 1956 and the Duke of Cornwall was the first person to sound the, the fog siren driven off a, a diesel generator, apparently. Can you see the top of the lighthouse? Top of the lighthouse, yeah. That's quite nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah see the lighthouse itself is really nice. But. Yeah, the lighthouse was actually built because not because there was lots of rocks that they have to avoid, it was built because they wanted to keep a monitor on illegal trawling in the area in the 1890s, I think it was, when it was first built. And well, that's about it. Not worth the drive. <laughs>